same pedigree. Nah, nah, they ain't scared of felonies. So when you see me, just had the same energy. Yeah, yeah, just had the same energy. Yeah, yeah, just had the same energy. Yo, you didn't know what it is, man. It's that boy Punch, Mr. See me with that same energy, Mr. Brooklyn everywhere. And I got my guy with me. Let him know if they don't know. Sub China Mac, aka Mr. Mac Talk, now for Back Talk. Bow. Bow, and this is this 50.com, nigga. Yo. Yo, can I be honest with you, bro? 59 people hit me up to interview you, bro. 59? That's a million niggas, man. That's a lot you got of 600 people, people, 600 breezy people hitting me. That's gang. I love, you know oh, what I mean? Shout, shout out, out to Nufi. Like, like. Yeah. Rita's lit, free 600 Breezy, let's just get that out straight off. Yeah, you yeah. get what I'm saying? That's, that's my guy. And um, I love him. You know what I mean? He'll be home sooner than we can think. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, but Mac, first time you on this 50? Um, yeah. That's lit. Yeah. So we got a lot to cover. We get to talk about all the good stuff. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling great. You You're good. Me? You home. You're good. I know you in and out all the time, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a fucking drama with my shit, man. It, 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 I, I hate to smile on it, man, but some of my guys, it's like, I don't know, man. They just always getting in and out. It's always some type of trouble. Are we good now? Are you good? Are you on some type of parole? Are we like... Yeah, I just came from parole. So, you know, I, I was late. I was supposed to be here at like 1 o'clock, 1 I mean 12.45. I got here at like 1.45 because <laughs> of parole. Parole right down the block. Yeah. So and they, they own me, you. They had me hold up. Now they're not really on me. It's just you know I, I just I just put in some fucked up situations. You know what I'm saying, but it is what it is. But you know with that parole shit, you got one foot in, one foot out. You know what I'm saying. Thanks. So you might not even be fucking up, but because I'm on their radar and because I'm moving in a way that they're not really in agreement with. You know what I'm saying. Not and not not like I'm in the street. Not like I'm doing anything wrong. It's just like you know. So any little thing they could they could change. Is it is it the magnitude of attention that you get that kind of agitates them a bit? Yeah, plus I'm a little I'm I'm I make I make I'm I'm really controversial, you know what I'm saying? So I make I decisions. I make little I, I, I make wild decisions, you know what I'm saying? Like not not even on a like so, you know, even with the type of statements I make, even with the type of, you know, the attitude I take on certain things, mm -hmm. you know, it rubs them the wrong way. I'm still trying to like Learn how to like, you know what I mean, deal with this shit. Be more know? peaceful, be better. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, so, I mean, I've heard about you for years, you know, straight up and down. I like to be the one that's always paying attention, and I always felt like, yo, it looks like he's about to go, and it always looks like you pick up steam, and then you got locked again. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, is it a, is it as frustrating as it looks, or you know what I mean? Is it? That shit is super frustrating. It's like the story of my life. You feel me? Yeah. I think I like I got like a little curse. I mean, not even a curse. It's, it's, it's like a self-inflicted curse. I think. Like you know what I'm saying? Cause a motherfucker so used to losing. You know what I mean? Like 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 intuitively, that shit just automatically kicks in. Like when you're about to win, it's just like I right, you don't really deserve to win. So something inside just wow. makes me. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't really come to grips with my own demons and and you know what I mean? Like cause Ever since I was a kid, I was just taught, I was just, I was losing all the time. You know what I mean? I take losses, you know, juvenile detention centers here, yeah. people dying there, yeah. left and right, just nothing goes right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that at a certain time, it's like you get so accustomed to that shit that, you know what I mean? You'll be working and then, you know, just self, just at a certain point, you just won't let you, you, you like, yourself won't let you do it because you haven't come into grips with that. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Um, I know, I'd like to think I know a decent amount about you paying attention and watching. Um, I want to at least, at least tap on your come up for the people that haven't seen you before. You get what I'm saying? That don't yeah. know. Um, you a young kid. You correct me where I go wrong at. You're a young kid. Um, grew up just with your mom. Uh -huh. Pops in and out. Uh -huh. Um, involved in the whole gang. Uh -huh. Um, what's your pops a part of? I forget. Flying dragons. Flying dragons, and then you a ghost shadow. Yeah. Yeah. See, I pay attention a little bit. It's yeah. a whole different world. It's a different that world. Shit. I, yeah. I know. You get what I'm saying? I'm growing up with Bloods and Crips, yeah. trying to shoot the folks. You get what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. And then it's like I'm hearing all of this. It's like a whole different world. So you grow up. It's aggressive. Is it as aggressive as our shit? I'm not to separate it, but like our gang life. Is it as it, aggressive? It was. It was. Well, this is. This is. This is back then. This yeah. is like, you know what I mean? I grew up in the 80s, like 90s, you know what I'm saying? So this is back then. Chinatown was a lot more aggressive. Everything, New York was more aggressive at Facts. that time. Everything was aggressive. 
So like you walk through Chinatown right now, you might not see shit. But back then, you'll see dead bodies on the street, motherfuckers get thrown out the window, shit like that is always happening out there. However, Chinatown, the Chinese mindset was a little more, you know, just organized than the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like the Understood. Bloods and the Crips and. Back then, it wasn't even Bloods and Crips. Back then, it was like Decepticons and you know oh, what I'm talking, saying? Like oh, that. So it. we're talking about that time, you know what oh, I mean? Okay. So, so back then, it was, it was lit, but business was always at the forefront, you know what I'm saying? So we couldn't make shit hot because then it would fuck up business, you know what I'm saying? Understood. So everything was a lot more organized, a lot more like, you know, there was protocol, like, and, and motherfuckers really followed protocol. Yeah. I think, I, I think um, in a bunch of things, like it... The, the the culture we got mirrored almost like how the Italian culture was. Yeah. Where it's like the mafia and the mob, they kind of, they protect, bully. They do what they do to, to keep control of their neighborhood. Similar to like, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I guess Bloods and Crips don't operate at all like that at all. You get what I'm saying? It's not structured the same way. Yeah. So when you're growing up and you and you start getting into this, um, is it is it difficult for you to get... Like, okay, I, I get it. You are part of the Chinese culture. My fault. I'm just trying to gather all the thoughts. You are part of the Chinese culture, Chinatown, in and out. But when you go to the regular parts of the city, are, are niggas respecting you almost? You get what I'm saying? Or are y'all always having to prove yourself? Like, I know we Chinese. We're going to have to show y'all we action too. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my um, because, you know, Chinatown is here, but then you got, like, Lower East Side over there, and it's kind of removed. You know what I'm saying? So Fact. a lot of times, motherfucker might go to school, a dude might get jumped. You know what I'm saying? One of ours might get jumped and we would have to rally up, go over there like fucking 50 deep and just That's really action. like, and, and smash. You know what I'm saying? And that happened like a lot of times, even in Queens, like Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it happens all the time. So we was always being tested, you know what I'm saying? Especially outside of our, our domain, our out of our space, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, and that, and that was like, you know, in prison too, you just gotta, you know, cause they, they, they look at us in a certain light and especially back then. Now it's a little different. I guess Asians that we're a little more accepted now to everybody a little bit more, even not even just the hood, but worldly. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. So back then it was like, we was looked at it in, in a light, like, you know, we was inferior, more like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. a lot of times everywhere we had to, we had to really perform and really had to show, you know, that we, we not. We not what you think we are. I think the outsiders just looked at it. I know, like, when we was growing up, just the Chinese people, like, quiet, uh, nerdy, super smart, and just to themselves. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's like all of the recipe for getting picked on. You get what I'm saying? In a young kid's mind, they just want to feel like they're bigger and better than someone. So it's like, yeah, push the kid that's not going to do something. Mm. But you telling me you're coming back with some smoke. <laughs> you, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you push the wrong one, and it's a different situation. Um, juvenile. You know what I mean? Juvenile detention. How how is that for you? Because it's like, are you were you mature mentally enough to be like, shit, I just left my mom out there to kind of because I know I would imagine that you were doing some type of shit breadwise for the house, or at least supporting how everybody grows up with trying to help their mom. When you in and out of juvenile um detentions, are you even like aware, like, damn, I'm really putting my mom through struggles, or are you just totally in your own shit, ignoring? Now I wasn't even paying attention to that, honestly, man. I was just like I was just, I don't know, I was just wild, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was just thinking about, my mindset was just like, you know, I didn't even think about nobody else. I just thought about what I wanted to do and what I was trying to do, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, it's bad, but then when you're in jail, you think about it, like, damn, you know, mom's like, you know what I mean? Damn, I'm putting her through it. You think about it, but then yeah. when, you, when that door opens, you back out there, and it's like, <laughs> All right, what's up? Like, you know what I'm saying? Back then, to the shit. You know, so it, that that type of mindset is the same with anybody else. You know what I'm saying? But I, my mindset is more like people from the hood because I grew up in juvenile. You know what I'm saying? I just that's where I, I, my first year, my first age going into juvie, like I was eight years old. You know what I'm saying? And Wait, I, eight? I was eight. I went in. How fucking, do you go to juvie at eight? I, that that wouldn't be really considered juvie. That'd be like group homes. <laughs> And shit, but I caught a case. J Judge Judy gave me like fucking 19, 18 months. You know what I'm saying? Judge, Judge Ju Judy, Judy? Judge Judy. But she, before she did the TV shit. Oh, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, Judge was... Judy. Before she did the TV shit, she was Manhattan fucking, um, uh, uh, um, like, like, like children, like DFY judge. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. And she smacked me with 18 months because I caught a case out here. What did you do at eight, bro? 
I like, I'm some I, wild I, shit. I'm gonna throw a brick at somebody. At eight, man, like you really are a hot like you, like. Yeah, but see, like back then, I, when I joined the gang, the gangs would use people like eight, like eight to like fifteen. Would use all of us to do all the crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? So they would gas our head up. Oh, I get what you're saying. And have us do, because they know nothing will really happen to us, and we don't really know nothing, so we can't really talk about anything. We just doing about, we just, you know what I'm saying? So at that time, I wanted to be accepted bad, you know what I'm saying? Because I felt like my pops wasn't, my pops wasn't fucking with me. And on top of that, there was like a bad stain on his name, you know what I'm saying? So like, I just wanted wanted to grace over it. I I, I wanted, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's my my stories, you know what I'm saying? So like, I don't... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna not talk about that. That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? Like that's understood. What so he had a bad stain on his name, and I wanted to. And and I felt that tension, and I wanted to do everything possible for me not to be a part of that legacy. Like I wanted to show uh-huh. everybody. All right, I'm not with that. I'm. A, I'm gonna let it go. Like so, at any minute, when they said, "Yo, something got to be done," I'm jumping at that shit. What's up? Like you know what I'm saying? Pick up the gun. I don't give a fuck, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. at that time, I just wanted to show everybody I'm not him. And, and like, you know, and I, I was seeking for love. You know what I'm saying? I was seeking for acceptance, seeking for love. But these weren't the right people for me to be doing Understood. that. You know what I'm saying? I ran away from the really people that really loved me, that, that really, you know what I mean? That and really cared. The better I ran you, away yeah. from that to some motherfuckers that really didn't give a fuck and just wanted to use me for whatever they could use me for. You Understood. Know what I'm and I think that's the same story no, nah, I agree. I agree. Like, you know, I get it. But when you say you caught the case at eight, you know, most of the shit, it's, I guess, culturally, they were even pulling in even younger. Now they don't, you know, it's not so young that they do it. But definitely killing the junior high school kids. Everybody, 11, 12, 13, everybody's blood and crib and folk. You know what I mean? They definitely using them as front line. You got to hold a hammer. You know what I mean? The police yeah. come, y'all play tag and run. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, y'all are just running. Don't stop. The cops not going to do nothing to you. I, I mean, we see all of that, you yeah. know, so it's, it's tough to hear, you know, as an adult. As an adult, bro, we look back as grown men and as, when you got to handle responsibility, you value life better, you value everything. You look back and be like, it's just totally fucked up what niggas really do and how yeah. the whole shit affects everyone. Um... It, was the disdain, is the disdain to your pop still there, or have you gotten over it? I mean, personally, you know, I don't really, it is what it is. Like, I mean, I accept him for whatever he did. I don't really talk, I don't know him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still haven't really spoke to him, but I used to hold a crazy grudge for him. Like, if I seen him, I would have fucking, like, Cut them, cut them, like, you know what I'm saying? But now I don't feel like that, you know what I'm saying? Now I just feel, I feel kind of sorry for him, you know what I'm saying? But I haven't spoken to him, but on a, on a, like, in terms of, like, the morals and principles and, like, what, you know, I adopted and every, all of that, I look at him in that light, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you, you did some bullshit, and it's not even you did some bullshit, it's, it, you did some bullshit for yourself solely, you didn't even do it for the family, you didn't even do it, like, I. Right, they might kill my son and they might kill my my family, you know what I'm saying? So let me do this and protect them. That would still be unacceptable, but at least it's like a little like, all right. You wouldn't agree, but you'd understand. Exactly, you know what I'm saying? But this motherfucker here just did it and just left and had motherfuckers like, all right, like, you know what I'm saying? And At that age, did you understand how much danger you could have been in? I didn't understand, but I saw it. My mom's understood, so and I saw it reverberate through her like you know what I'm saying like I saw how she was moving and she was just and now looking back you know what I'm saying like even when I was like 16 17 looking back I saw it like all right this motherfucker had us like fucked up you know what yeah. I'm saying and like at that time I really didn't understand what was going on but I kind of understood because you know I, I kind of heard that but then once I got of age I really understood and I really understood like yo this motherfucker that ass just put us like in a fucked up situation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, that shit had me like, I really hated him, you know what I'm saying, for a long time. But now it's like, you know, I realize like that type of shit is what, when you hold on to that type of shit, is what will keep you in prison forever, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, as much as, you know, I, dis- I dislike it, as much as I, I, I really like, feel like, you know, that fucked me over, me holding on to it will fuck me over even more. Yeah. It'll just 
have a continuous eat away. effect. You know what I'm saying? It'll eat away. Thanks. So I've learned to let it go, you know what I'm saying, as much as I can, and kind of forgive him, you know what I'm saying, for whatever he did. You know what I mean? Because, and not even for him, it's for me, you know what I'm saying? You got to do it to, so you can get past it. Uh, you know, I, I think... I think the toughest part with everybody, with somebody who tells or snitches, however they want to word it, is that we all watch everybody make personal decisions. When you turn ghost, you ghost. You get what I'm saying? I, I, a lot of people too, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're not blood, you're not crip ever when you turn in jail, nothing. No. You just, you ride your own wave the whole time. Yeah, so, but, I fuck, but like, I fuck with a lot of homies, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot nah, of it's no diss, yeah, but no, you no. just your own shit. Yeah, you got... my own shit. I never, I never, and I chose that. Like, I could have been any blood set, and I could have had stain, I could have had all types of shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never did that because I felt like that wasn't my wave, you know what I'm saying? I felt like, you know, I was already something, I already put my oath into that, and I'm not going, I don't want to just go somewhere else and it's cool over there, so I'm going to be this yeah, and then facts. be this over there. You can't just there. jack every gang if it's fake. So I didn't do that. And on, the, on another note, the reason why I didn't do that is because I saw there was too much infighting shit. Like, you know what Set I'm saying? Set tripping is big. Yeah, like, and then plus on top of that is that like, I don't know you from a hole in the wall, but you might pull up in the jail. You could have been a rat. You could have been a, a you could have been a, 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 a rapist. Anything. Anything, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know who you are, you know what I mean? But you pull up, we ride the same nap, I'm with you. And then now it's like, you know what I mean? Well, I don't like, even know who the fuck I'm yeah. banging for. I might get stabbed in the yard over you, you know what I'm saying? But, 100%. You know what I mean? So I never wanted to put myself in that, you know what I'm saying? I wanted, I wanted to choose the people I fuck with. Nah, as you should. You know, a lot of niggas jack gang now. It's super trendy. You know, if, yeah, you've, it's more of a, if you've looked at the internet yeah. lately, it's, it's very trendy. You know, it's like a new pair and of sneakers. That's sad, though, you know, bro. let's just pick up a flat. I mean, when you know it, real right niggas, you get what I'm saying? When you really know real right niggas and you really understand what they went through and you know that kind of action they've been putting in and pain they've been putting in since a child, to be a part of a gang and just watch how somebody else is just like, hey, look, I'm gang now. You get what I'm saying? It makes a mockery of the pain, it makes a mockery of the jail time, it makes a mockery of the lost lives, the, the, the amount of times niggas risk their freedom for gang and for the flag. And for the code or whatever that gang is. So I understand it. You know, you grow up in it and you understand it. You get what I'm saying? So I see, you know, all the fake shit is, 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 is definitely not cool to look at. You get what I'm saying? But I do understand that gang banging, how it looks now, is different. I understand that. You get what I'm saying? I don't understand. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, not every gang banging looks like how they used to look years in the past. Uh, I think that there used to be, you could look in a certain person's face, not know them and be like, he might be with it. And then there's some people that you'd be like, hey, he looked too timid. You know, that's not a good way, but I think we all have to make a stereotype real quick. Yeah. When you walk down a block, there's certain times where you on your shit and there's other times where you're like, okay, that's, that's a calm scenario. I think everyone judges everyone. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You'd be someone that they shouldn't judge. Because, you know, that would be the wrong one to sleep on. You get what I'm saying? That Generally speaking. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I would imagine. You get what I'm saying? I grew up, I'm six foot five. Like you say, punch you about the dunk. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> a lot of niggas is not like, yo, let's just, he don't look like they're automatically giving me look. He's six foot five. They're automatically 250. giving me that. He that, looked that like that he already respect. something. Yeah, yeah. Like, if some, both of us got to jump this nigga. You get yeah. what I mean? But it's changed. We got to admit that, you know, the people who, who are in these shits not always they don't always look like how we want it to look or how we were typically seeing it yeah how rather. we how we grew up you know it's different putting the face yeah in. i just i look at it like as long as they are prepared for repercussions then i gotta respect you as the same i can't just judge how you look but if you ready like it's action time we all go the boys come everybody locked if you ready the same way i'm ready to just hold it down then i gotta respect you i don't care what you're wearing I don't care how you look. If you with it, you with it. You get what I'm saying? But before we get sidetracked, I think everybody understands it at least. Um, teenage years. You get what I'm saying? Teenage years. That's when um, I, I saw on Vlad, you know, shout out to Vlad, he did something dope too. But um, that's when they used to call you like, basically like black, like because you was into the hip hop shit so much. What, who are you listening to? What's making you love the culture? What's making you be like, yo, I'm fucking with this shit? So, I I told you I went to I went to juvie. Yeah, I was eight. You know what I'm saying? So when I went there, like you know, before that I lived in sheltered. I was sheltered, like Asian Chinese 
Like, you know what I'm saying? So I never really came across, even if I was talking to black people, Chinese people, I mean, we already know. We already know. It's like a lot of racism, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And especially towards black people, you know what I'm saying? We're older school, you know what I'm saying? Um, so even if my grandfather, one time, I went, I, I was, he came to pick me up from school. I'm talking to two black kids. We walk in and shit. And after that shit, he, he scolded, like, he, he, he told me I couldn't talk to black kids no more. And I told him, fuck you, I'm, I'm not staying here no more then. So my mom had to come pick me up, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, you can't tell me who the fuck I could talk to, who the fuck I can't talk to. I talk to whoever the fuck I want to talk to. I was like six, seven or some shit like that. So fucking, <laughs> besides that, shits. like, but, but besides that, but, but what I'm, I'm saying that to say, I grew up, like, in, you know what I'm saying? I, I really didn't know about nothing else outside of Asian, you know what I'm saying? So. Chinese. So when I went to the, the group home, I was the only Chinese kid there. Back then, it was like fucking, I was never see Chinese kids in that type of situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I went there, I was the only Chinese kid. There might have been one white kid. Everybody else was black and Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I had to find a way, here again, I had to find a way to fit in. You know what I'm saying? I had to find a way to be accepted. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because everybody had jokes. And I didn't really understand this new type of, you know, way of, you know what I mean? Communicating, I yeah, vibing, yeah, chilling, the whole shit. I didn't, yeah, I didn't understand shit. that shit, you know what I'm saying? So I had to learn, I had to assimilate to that. You know what I mean? It just to, for me to survive, for me to even like, you know, I had to assimilate to it. And then I had to find something to actually kind of like help me assimilate, you know what I'm saying? I did. And that was hip hop. You know I what did. I mean? So, because when I first, uh, you know, you jump in the van, they bring you in the van. It's not like a lockup shit. They put you in the van, they take you to the mall, they take you to Harlem, yeah. they take you all around, like, you know what I'm saying? So, we jumped in the van, and I remember they played fucking KRS One. You know what I'm saying? Got myself a Uzi and my brother a nine. I'm just like, oh. And then, like, <laughs> these kids is like going like this, and I'm just like, oh, like, this is like, oh. Like, it gave me a feeling <laughs> like, like, like a rebellious, like a hard. So, I immediately tapped into that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I immediately, like, you know, it appealed to me. You know what I'm saying? So I went hard with it. You know? So I started dressing like it. I started just trying to, like, you know, be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I felt like, you know, I, felt, I wanted to feel like a part of something. You know I get saying? you. So I did that. And then that's how I, that was my bridge toward to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And hip hop. And ever since then, so it was like eight years old. Ever since then, I've been a part of that. You know what I'm saying? And after a while, it's just like, it's not even, I'm trying to fit in anymore. It's I'm you. in already. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it's a part of me now. So, and I, I started listening to, it was like Kooji Rap back then. It was like um, KRS One, Rakim, all of that. You know what I'm saying? But my era where I really came to grips with who I was and really started feeling it was like Mob Deep was like fucking Capone and Noriega, Crazy. was like 50, you know what I'm saying? A little after, you know what I mean? Wu-Tang, all that shit. That's when I started feeling yeah. like, all right, this is me now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so that that was the music. That, That's crazy. My soundtrack. Yo, the culture is so big, man. You know, I'm listening to it and I'm happy because, you know, our culture gets shitted on a lot, man. You know what I mean? A lot. It's like, yeah, it's just bad. It's It, it, it hurts people. It causes everybody to split up. And you telling the story from a really genuine place. I'm looking at you, bro, and you really like, yo, hip hop brought me into a, a home to an extent. You get what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just bad. The news kills us all the time. Everybody writes bad. Hip hop is bad. Hip hop closed down clubs. It do everything bad. When you're just saying that, it's like, yo, it made me connect and open up my eyes and see a whole different world. It's not all bad. It's my mind just went somewhere else. But you get what I'm saying. It's, yeah. It, it, it's big, man. The culture is huge. Um, rap comes into play. Um, are you starting to rap when you were a teen? Yeah, like I, because that was my, that was my way to, you know what I mean. So I wanted to, like, you know, just like I was in the gang, I wanted to do everything to really show myself. Same thing over here, but now it's like I want to be a part of music. All right, so like crisscross was popping at that time when I was in. The, and I was like in love. I was like, oh, they so dope. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I fucking started, uh, me and my bunkie, we, <laughs> we started a group. We was called the, Diag the Diagonal Triangles. I don't know how the fuck, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And then we just started rapping. And then from there, it was just like, 
after that, you know, I just kind of started getting nice with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I started getting good at it, and I started getting better at it, and motherfuckers was teaching me how to do shit, and I was like, to start, and then that was my, that was my ticket in every time. You know what I'm saying? When I walk in a new spot or yeah. whatever, everybody be like, oh, that's, that's, that's son, he nice, like, you know what I'm saying? What you was going by there? I wanted like 10 different names. I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? But when I was in jail, like after that, like GK was my name before China Mac. China Mac was a name that I took, I, I, I adopted right before I came home after doing my 10, 11 years. You know what I'm saying? And that was the, a name that the Mac Bowlers had gave me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, the, the Macs wanted me to be a part of the Macs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was there, I was in C95. When L.O., when, oh, when, when Eli, when, when Sex Mula, when Oma, yeah, yeah. Disco, or like the, 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 the Max yeah, yeah. was just getting started. You know what I'm saying? It was like fresh. It was new. And then they only took the Mac Bowlers. Oh, at that time, they were so like, they were so like, everybody was getting money. Everybody got the bag. Everybody let that gun go. And they, they only accepted a certain amount of people. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, the Max was like, they want shit. You know what I'm saying? So they, they tried to get me to be a part of, the, to be a Mac. But I never, I was like, nah, but I fuck with the Max hard. You know what I'm saying? But then he was like, nah, 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 that's the Mac. That's the Mac. That's the, that's the Mac. That's China Mac. That's China Mac. That's China Crazy. Mac. Crazy. So from there, the Macs will always be like, yo, China Mac, yo, Mac, yo, Mac. And then every time I see a Mac, I make sure, you know, you know, we, we good or whatever. But then... I would never turn man, you know what I'm saying? So then when I, right before I went home, I'm like, I, I'm going to fuck with the music shit. I got to switch my name. This GK is not really, this, it doesn't have that ring to it. It ain't saying? enough. So <laughs> I was yeah. like, China Mac sounds, you know what I'm saying? It has more of a ring, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I took that, and then that's that's how I got my name. A lot of people think I'm homie, and a lot of people think I'm blood, like on the street. Dude, be like, yeah. yo, Brim Love, hat, Brim Love. <laughs> and I just be like, ah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to sit down and have a conversation every with time in the middle of the street. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not really, but, but so, but, um, that's how, uh, and then I started rapping, and that was my, you know, that came home. Yeah. I, I, I'm not mad at dope, bro. Your story is something special. Um, uh, again, it depends on how much you want to talk on it. You went to jail for 10 years. Yeah. Um, what'd you get? What did they find you guilty on while you had to do the whole 10 clip? Oh, um, for 10 murder? And that's the whole Jen and his boy, that whole situation. Yeah. How much you want to tap on it? We could breeze in, just give him a little something. I mean, we, I don't really want to talk about it too much. That shit's out there. But, you know, we could give him a little... I, I basically... I basically... Uh, Ran down on a rapper at the time. He was he was an Asian rapper, signed a Rough Rider. I ran down on him for reasons that you know it really didn't have nothing to do with him. You know what I'm saying? It really had. It really. All right, let me talk about it. Fuck it. The night that night when I seen homie, I had before before I seen him, I was I was in Queens, and um I came out of a ball. I was a little drunk and shit. I came out of a bar and I seen, when I was walking, I was with three other people that I was kind of new, but I like, so they stopped to speak to somebody. So when I seen this somebody, I'm like, like, I'm uneasy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, who the fuck is this dude, bro? This dude, look, man, I'm familiar, but I'm uneasy. I'm not sure who the fuck he is. So I look at my man that I knew for years. So he look at me and he give me that, that look. So I pulled out, as soon as I saw that shit, I knew who he was. He's the dude that stabbed me. He came, he stabbed me from behind. I never, I never seen him in person. He stabbed me from behind because I was giving it to his man. Like, he, I had him on the floor. I was breaking his fucking head in, you know what I'm saying? And somebody came behind me and stabbed me in my lung, you know what I'm saying? Boom. Hey. So he, he ran. I never got to see his face. Thank God. I was, I was supposed to die that night, you know what I'm saying? Well, I wasn't supposed to die that night, but I could have died that night, you know what I'm saying? It was like an inch away from my heart, and I drove myself to the hospital. But um, I never seen him, but I seen a picture of him. I'm like, yo, I swear to God, if I, wherever I see him, the smoke, I don't give a fuck where we at. It could be in the court building, bro. I'm letting them have it. So I seen, I seen my man's face, and I looked at him, I'm like, oh, that's this thing right here. So I, I had the hammer on me, I took the gun out, boom. So my man jumped in front of the gun. You know what I'm saying? So I was about to give it to him right there. It was like on Main, it was like Main Street, fucking seven o'clock. It was lit. Like mad people, I didn't give a fuck. 
what I'm saying? I was about to head tap him right there. So my man jumped in front of the gun like, yo, bro. And he ran. He booked. You know what I'm saying? He booked. I'm like, fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I was just like, oh, man. I went back in the car. I was tight. Instead of me going home, I go to, I go to yeah. Chinatown. I come to the bar. I go to the with bar. With the same men. Same, same men. Because I'm ready. In, in my yeah. mind, I already killed this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my mind, I, I already did it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just. So anybody right now, anybody, yo, anybody going to get it right now. So I walked, walked in there, and I'm just like in a bar like this. So I see Jin. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, all right. So my man come up to me like, oh, yo, boom, boom, boom. He did such and such to my man, girl. So I'm like, what? So I'm just like. You I'm, on it. I'm just, I'm just like, you on action what? time? You on action time. So all right, let's go get this dude, man. <laughs> Who's son right here? You know what I'm saying? And then plus on top of that, before that, there was a little like fake, not real tension, but it was like he was a rapper. I was on my rap. So everybody, everybody say it every day. So, I can imagine. So he. I'm watching him, he go into the, the bathroom. So I'm like, all right, let's go. I tap my man, I'm like, come on, let's go. So I, I ran that. So when he went in the bathroom, right before he walked in the bathroom, I grab him by his shirt and I push, push him in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, 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 boom, boom, boom. And he squirms out of that shit, you know what I'm saying? And then he runs, boom. But then I'm, I'm, I'm trying, but now I pull, now I'm just, I pull out the gun. So I, I, I didn't get the cocky, I, I pull out the gun. He runs into the kitchen. You know what I mean? Then I hear commotion and behind me because I came with I uh, was with, with a couple other people. So there's commotion and shit. So I turn around and then um somebody like yo he got a knife. You know what I'm saying? So I see son was, that was his man or whatever. And then you know long story short the other shit is out there right. I don't want to really yeah. go back into that. But long story short somebody got shot. You know what I mean? I was all on the fuck. There was cameras all over the fucking place. There was a hundred people in the motherfucking club. There's no way I was beating that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the bouncers was fake. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they wanted to do something. So I pull out. I, I was like, what's up? And it was gang members in this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, what's up? The fuck y'all want to do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody want to heat. Nobody want to smoke. You know what I'm saying? So I just walked out the shit and I left. And then I ran for about a year and I got booked and, um, Washington, in Seattle, like by Seattle, Washington and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, um, and that's what happened, you know? But at the end of the day, like, you know, with that shit, like, I really don't want to talk about that, but then I wanted to talk about it right now because I wanted to show, you know, whoever's listening, you know what I mean? Because I know you got a, probably a lot of young followers Fact. that's listening, you know what I'm saying? Like, one fucking, one, that, that, I almost killed that. I could have killed them because the first shot, was aimed on his head. It was on his head. I had the gun on his head, and it was right here on the top of his shit. There was no, that was no surviving that shot. I, I, I had a fucking a forty on me. I was just gonna take his head off. You know what I'm saying? I had it on him. The shit jammed, and then I, I reshot him, and the shit, the shit hit him in his back. Thank God, it hit him in his back. He ain't died. You know what I'm saying? If he would have died, I would have never came home. You know what I mean? And the reason why I want to talk about this again, even though I said. I, to other people I don't want to talk about this is when y'all make these decisions, man, these one, one decision, that one decision, that one, you know, when you're thinking with your, with your emotions and you're thinking your with other, your anger, you know what I'm saying? I would have killed somebody that didn't even deserve that. That's not even the person I wanted to kill. You know what I'm saying? If I would have had to sit for, for life, I would have rather killed the motherfucker that, that almost killed me. You know what I'm saying? Then at least I would have been like, you know, you know what I'm saying? But every night I had to sit down and if I would have had to spend my life or whatever it was, I had to deal with the con I had to deal with something that it wasn't even for this person. That wasn't even meant for him. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is like, you know, with the younger people, man, like when y'all making these decisions out here, you really have to think how what you're actually doing and how this shit is gonna affect you, not right then, but for the rest of your life and everybody that has anything to do with you. It affects everybody, you know what I'm saying? There's, man, I, know, I know hundreds of people in them yards, man, up top, you know what I'm saying, that, that will never see, never go home. You know what I mean? They'll never see their kids get their diplomas, never see their kids have their kids, never see nothing because they made one mistake. You know what I'm saying, one mistake. I was fortunate enough to have God on my side 
and you know learn what I learned and not really have to pay with my life. You know what I'm saying? But everybody ain't fortunate like that. You know what I mean? So, you know that's my message, man. Like yo, just if you gonna do it, make sure it's worth it. Make sure that's something that you are gonna be ready to live for, live with for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Some things you gotta do. You know what I mean? Some things you gotta do, but a lot of things you don't have to do. You know what I mean? So. Uh, nah, I, I, I appreciate you saying it because niggas pay attention. They watch everything. They sponge this whole thing. You know, they, yeah, this they shit sponge ain't cool, it. man. Like I know, like, this shit ain't cool, man. A lot of these kids really think this shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? They look at that shit like, oh, you went to jail. Oh, you blood. You know what it is? It's because people have gotten famous from it, so they emulate it, thinking that the fame is that, and it, it never really is. Yeah. That shit is pain, bro. Pain, you know what I'm saying? It's not famous pain. It's it's not famous pain, bro. Like when you when you when you in that vision floor, when you in a courtroom and you look back and you see your mother crying, you know what I'm saying? You call, she got fucking cancer because of the stress you caused her. That's pain, bro. That's not that's not that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so that's a real she had cancer? Yeah. Yeah. See that's what I'm saying, like you just your story is is Unbelievable, to, to, you know, for you to come out. But then you came out after, um, after the long bid. What year you came out? You came out in 2015. Oh, uh, it was 14. So you came out. 14, in 15. 15, like 14 December of 14. Correct. I came out December of like around that time. So I say 15 because it was like the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, you started back with rap. Yeah. And um, walk us through that. Like how you picked up a lot of buzz when you first came home. A lot of people was rocking with you. Your story was humongous, you know, like everybody punching or trying to mack it. No, you know, like, you got to fuck with him. He's about to blow up. And right when I feel like, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm buying in. I see everything. I like it. Everyone's speaking A1 about you. Then you was gone again. You know what I mean? Um, Put us through that. And then what made you go back? Well, I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, like. With all of this shit that I just explained, with all the gang shit, all this other shit, you know what I'm saying? It comes, you know, it comes with shit. Like, it comes with baggage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you deal with it. You, you I, I did all the years in jail, and I'm, I come back home, and it looks like I'm good. It looks like I'm doing good. It looks like I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm working. So, like, you know what I mean? Ah, right, you looking good, bro, but you don't know the demons I got to deal with at nighttime. You don't know, like, the stress. Like, motherfucker, I don't know how to pay bills, bro. I just did fucking 15, more more than half my life in jail. I don't know nothing about no bills. I don't know nothing about responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? I know everything I needed was brought to me. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I needed, phone call, sent to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, all I knew was fighting for the phone, making sure I got slot time, making sure I got food, making sure, that's it, you know what I'm saying? So now when you're, when I'm home and I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, but the stress, it was building and building and building and, and like, like the responsibilities was on me, you know what I'm saying? I understand. And this is new to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm usually, I need, yo, hold me down, bro, boom, boom, boom. I'm usually like that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So now it's like responsibilities on me and I really couldn't, and I, I was climbing so much that I, I put so much on my plate that I really wasn't even understanding that I'm doing too much. You know what I'm saying? That for me, mentally, you know what I mean? Yeah, you making moves and shit, but mentally I wasn't ready for all that shit on my back. You know what I'm saying? And that shit just made me like fumble. Like, you know what I'm saying? I made a, a wrong decision. You know what I'm saying? And that shit, you know, that shit landed me back 16 month violation. You know what I mean? And then just these little things that happens, you know, that happens right before I'm about to catch steam, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'll do something, I'll make a decision that kind of sets me back, you know what I'm saying? And um, I could blame other people, I could blame other things, oh, police not fucking with me, oh, you know, but, but, but really, honestly, it's really me, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, it's really the decisions I make, it's really the, the me not being conscious of my surroundings, and me just being, you know, just not really on top of my shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, not not the music shit, not that just... Life. Period, what what affects me. I know nobody knows me better than me, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I know what's gonna make me feel a certain way, I know these things, and then as soon as I, and I have to, and I didn't know how to take, like, signs, like, you know what I'm saying? Certain signs, like, uh -huh. I, I can't do this, I have, and then, you know what I mean? So I'm learning that now, I'm still, Struggling with the shit, you know. I just came. I just got two violations back to back. You know what I'm saying? Shot a shot a music video 
on the roof. Yeah, you know we won't get saying? to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I keep on running into these walls, you know what I'm saying? But it's because of, you know, my, I wasn't being mindful of everything. I'm looking at it like it was little things, but it's, it was, it's the little things. It's always the little things. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, I was catching steam, and then fucking, I caught, a, I caught a violation, you know what I mean? And then that violation sat me back down for another 16 months. And I'm just like, damn. Now... I could have been like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, boom, boom, boom. But I spent the 16 months like, all right. I looked at it like, all right. This is what was supposed to happen. I needed time to sit back or whatever, whatever. Now I know that I can do this rap shit because I, I caught steam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you did. Nothing. I didn't, I didn't have shit. I didn't have a bag. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't on Instagram or whatever, flossing money. I, I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers just fuck with my story. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, and I can't, that will never go nowhere. So I'm like, damn, I could do it. So now what do I need to do? I need to sit down, use this time. And now I know the, I know the battleground now. I know the battlefield. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying Before, stepping in, doing 10 years, coming out to this rap shit. I didn't know the field. Understood. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how, how it to, works. How All to shit, maneuver, of course. You know what I'm saying? Now I just, just I was just in there. So I know how it maneuvers now. Now I get 16 months to kind of plan. So I spent the 16 months reading books, planning, writing shit down, just making sure, not even music. I was just writing down plans and writing down ideas <laughs> and doing all that shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So when I came home, I went right back at it again. You know what I mean? And I just used my time for that. And I think that's what, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a good rapper. I'm, I'm good at what I do. You know what I mean, I'm not the best, I'm not the greatest. You know what I'm saying? It's not the music that people fuck with me for. You. I mean, it, it's me. You know what I'm saying? The music is going to be there. I'm not saying I'm not nice. Thanks. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's me that they fuck with. There's no other me. You know what I'm saying? So I use I, I understand that. I understand my strengths. I understand my weaknesses. And I and I just came up with a plan to just keep on fucking with that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So then I see you got the Dave East record. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? I just... I. I met, um, I was talking to Buddha, you know Buddha? Buddha Grants. Yeah, Buddha. Yeah. So, um, we, so I just texted Buddha one day like, yo, bro, um, could you, so I had made the record, but then I was like, yo, this needs a feature on it. So I was talking to my guy, Easy, my engineer, he's like, yo, you ever heard of Dave East? I'm like, nah, I never heard of him. You know what I mean? He was like, yeah, check him out. So I checked him out. So I'm like, oh, so I, I did some investigation and shit, looked at it, boom, boom. Then I saw that he fucked with Buddha. So I called Buddha, like, yo, Buddha, could you see if you can make that plug? You know what I'm saying? So he made the plug, and Dave East came through to the studio. We laid the record down. He did the video, you know, all for really a, a, a love price. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it was right before he was about to, to go. go. You know what I'm saying? It was right before that. You know what I mean? So I saw it. And I'm like, all right, boom. Same thing with Young and Me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I saw it before, and then I just reached out at that time. And it was, and I went to jail right after that. So I went to jail while Dave East popped. Young and Me had the record. I'm in jail. I'm in upstate box like this. Damn, bro. It's crazy. I was like, you know what I mean? Because I felt like I was right there, too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how that, that's how that happened. You know we met each other a while ago. We did? You don't know. No. Yeah, I was MA DJ the whole oh. time. All right, so we uh, yeah, Webster yeah. Hall. I have just a bunch of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, like, the game go and, and shit split. Yeah. But, yeah. So I've been aware of who you are. So when everybody's hitting me, I'm like, I'm watching them. Let's wait for the record. Let's hear it. And they're like, yo, just do the story. And everybody's just there. And then I really get engulfed in the story and then go, all right, I get it. You know, I get it. There's no point in delaying. It's not about a record with you. Because I like to get the record. You get what I'm saying? I like to see the whole shit bubble. You know, like I've put my hand on shit right before it goes. Designer, of course, the MA shit, I was with her before. Yeah. The whole shit came and then the entire explosion and then we all shot that. Um, I didn't come today to the video, but we've seen everything. That's Barclay. Like I, I know everything, you get what I'm saying? And um, and then that split and then I've been in front of the 6ix9ine shit, 6ix9ine DJ now. So it's like, it's so much, I'm the cusp of it. So when it sees you, I go, there's a lot of shit with this guy. Where's the record? And then I go, it's bigger than that. And then Jesus is calling me about you. And G should be calling me about him. Yeah. <laughs> be clear. You get what I'm saying? But he's like, Punch, I know you watching me. I know you, I know, I know what I'm on. I gotta stop bullshit. I gotta stop the script shit. I gotta stop this shit. I need a song. But listen, 
there's this guy. And I said, who are we talking about? China Mac. I said, I know him. No, we got a record that's going to be legendary. Come to the video shoot, because I do this shit called Outside. Yeah. So I record. Good thing you ain't come to the video shoot. <laughs> Smart I, man. I, 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 look, so I've done, you know, like when Takashi shot Kuda, you know, we brought a bunch of the Crips over there, GS9 over there, let them meet Takashi, the Billies, all of that. So that's how that video got all the Crips and the Bloods together. Then I did when Fetty, GS9 came home, vlogged them from home, yeah. Kiki shoot when we went up top to A Boogie. So I've been outside during a bunch of gang activity a lot of times with it. And I just said, geez, trying to mag, I right, cool, I'm gonna pop out. And I ended up getting booked because I do the DJ shit same way that I do this. So I missed it. And then it's a frenzy. Yo, bro, they locked 150 people up. <laughs> it's 200 crazy. niggas, they had 100 guns. <laughs> and I'm just like, wait, what were they doing? I'm like, these niggas are shooting, you know, um, I don't like Chief Key video. And then the news comes out and then the truth comes. Is allegedly one gun there, a couple, you know what I mean, suspended licenses, one or two warrants, and I'm just like, wow. And then they still, China Mac and G's, like, y'all niggas is, you know, trying to bomb this whole shit off. You get what I'm saying? And y'all just doing y'all thing. Put me in that mode right there, um, that day, that mindset. How do you meet G's Gasoline? Why G's Gasoline? I free him too, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, free cheese, man. That's my guy. He called me the morning of before he went in. You know, turn himself in. Like, we outside. You know, niggas is in tune. But back to the. Yeah, free P. Gutter. I met. Um, Facts. I met G's Gasoline through P. Gutter. I met P. Gutter through La Brim. Um, Crazy. The, the, the big hound. Yeah. Uh, so, P. Gutter was. You know, when I first came home, Pete Gutter was with, you know, Bobby Schmurter and them. And La was calling me like, yo, bro, you know about Bobby Schmurter and them? And I'm like, nah. So he put me on to that. And then I met Pete Gutter. Yeah. And then Pete Gutter introduced me to G's. So when I, I didn't really know who G's was. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know who G's was. But then I seen, it was like right after the big op shit. I <laughs> met him, right? So I seen how everybody was like talking about him. And then I looked at his shit. I'm like, oh, son, son got the... He, you know what I mean? He, he, he got it. Yeah, he got the kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? So my, so my people, so I was, they was, we was always talking about doing a record, but then I really never stepped forward on it because I'm just like, all right, I'm doing my shit. I don't know if it meshes right now. I think, you know what I'm saying? So when I, then one day my man, my, my, my engineer again, Easy, shout out to Easy, he told me, he was like, yo, you need to do a record with G's. You need to do a record with one of these young kids right now. They get you, yeah, they get geez, you name man. out there. You know what I'm saying? They had the internet and a so, frenzy. So, <laughs> so, so me and G, so D-Rock came to the studio. I was like, all right, fuck it. I called G's and D-Rock. They pulled up to the studio, and we started doing this record. And that, that Mac Talk song, the beat came on. That was like the first beat he played. I'm like, all right, that's the beat right there. So then, you know, and that's the first time I kind of did that type of, like, you know, with that style. Of, the energy, like the Brooklyn saying? Drill shit. Yeah, yeah so... Me and G's did that. As soon as that record was done, I'm like, yo, this shit is hard, bro. This shit is like, it, it gives a whole nother feel to it. You know what I'm saying? So then I was like, all right. So we started bouncing ideas for the video shoot. So my, so because I'm from the Lower East Side, we're like, all right, fuck it. We're going to go to the Lower East Side. Now me, I, I, haven't, I haven't been in the Lower East Side. I haven't been out there really out there understanding how it is out there right now. I really didn't understand. You know what I'm saying? So... We was like, all right, we're going to go to Baruch, and we're going to shut Baruch down. You know what I'm saying? And and I, and I also, at that time, I didn't understand that my name was getting a little bit bigger. You know what I'm saying? So with me and G's together. And, and G's name wasn't yeah, the cleanest. And, and, and so, you know, together, like, you know. so when I went on my Instagram <laughs> and shit, I went on my Instagram, Facebook. I'm like, all right, we're going to shoot the video here. Everybody pull up. I want gang bangers in attendance. Everybody, everybody. I remember this day. So, bro. <laughs> Usually in my videos, 50 people could pull up, you know what I mean? 70 people, good. That's really good right there. It's like 350 people pull up, you know what I'm saying? It was flooded. There was mad people, Bloods, Crips, fucking GG, <laughs> Bacchias, cars started pulling up. And I was just like, oh. And I was so happy that this was going on because the it, it was the fruit of my labor. Like It was like, all right. Yo, motherfuckers is really starting to know, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, and that, and that means, so I was just so into that, so like, 
you know, that I really didn't escape the police. The police kept on trying to shut it down, but we just kept on moving this way. Ah, right, yeah, you can't do it here. We was moving that way, going that. And then really, they started really like fucking with us. So they, tried, they shut the shit down, and then we took it to the roof. You know what I'm saying? Like, there were so many people there that the police was like, yo, you can't shoot anymore. So I, they, they tried to grab me. They tried to, like, because they seen that I was the fucking, that I was the, 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 the ringleader of this shit. So they tried to grab me. So I started booking. I booked, I booked about the park. You know what I'm saying? So instead of leaving this shit, then here we go with the, with, the, uh, with the fucking, you know, with the decisions. Because I'm so caught up in making this shit that I forget about parole, I forget about all the shit I should be worried about right Thanks. now, because my freedom, the video ain't going to do nothing if I'm in jail, you know what I'm saying? So, I decided, I called, they was like, yo, we going to the building, we going to the roof. So I was like, alright, fuck it, we going to the roof. So I went up to the roof, finished shooting the video, but the police came and shut it down, and rest of all 44 of us. At first, they just took me, they took me, so they came up, because I ran from them, so they came up to this shit, so they pointed to me. You, China Mac, come on, let's go. They put the cuffs on me. My manager, everybody, like, there was kids there. There was all types of people there. There was 44 people there. It wasn't just game bangers. There was, a mother, there was mothers there. There was little sons there. There was some kids there. Yeah. It was, like, all types of people there. So they took me. So I'm just like, all right, I'm looking at my manager like, all right, just bail me out, man. I'm going to call you. Just wait for my phone call. She was like, yeah, I got you. You'll, you'll be home. You'll be home. So they take me into the precinct and shit. So I'm sitting there like this. Like, damn, I'm the only one they got. Then who I see? I see, like, a line of everybody. My manager's like this, looking crazy like this. I'm like, oh, you can't bail me out now, bitch. So, like, they, they took everybody. They took all of us, you know what I'm saying? And then because they, they, they thought they found a gun. They thought they found a real gun. And, 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 and because of my history and because of everything, they fucking, like, sensationalized the shit. The news took it. Oh, there was a gun. The shit wasn't even real. The shit, the shit was a prop gun. And somebody thought that it was ready, threw the shit off the roof, you know what I'm saying? So they took that, whatever, and they tried to take all of us. But because they found out the shit wasn't real, they let everybody go. And every, me, G's, everybody that got, like, priors and shit, they put us through the system, you know what I'm saying? And then, and yeah, and then... And G's was fighting the case the whole time. Yeah, and which then I, now, parole yeah. took me, and I had to go in parole, try to... I, I beat the hearings, thank God. Um, and, and, yeah... You find your way around some interesting scenarios, my brother. Yeah, I, I don't know how I do that. <laughs> you know what it is? I, it's meant to be. This, this is what God wants me to do something. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's like I'm meant to do something. I, I'm meant to do this shit. Like, whatever it is, I have such a fucking drive for this shit. Yeah. And nothing's going to stop me. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. If it, 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 I don't know if it's going to be a record, if it's going to be a movie. It's, it's going to be something. I'm going to get something. Something's going to propel me somewhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I have that driving force. I know it within my heart. Like, deep inside, I know yeah. it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, these things happen to me, and it's bad luck. But then I also get good luck because I find myself out of these shit. So I take those as signs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And all of these things is God telling me, all right, you need to, you know what I'm saying? So, I get know, you. I find, I I find you. myself in this some crazy shit, but I find myself out of some crazy <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just, you know, I'm blessed. Um, I'm blessed, I'm struggling, and I'm blessed at the same time. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a beautiful struggle. So, what's now? Is there a record? Is yeah, there this yeah. record that I can go Yo, I got and, 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 and bother Flex and Self and harass it? Because this nah, is what I want. I want to break everything. I'm trying to take one of these old niggas' spots. If you didn't get the message. Nah, I got the message. You, I, I want them to fuck up out of here. I know, I know. So, do you got a record that I could go to bat with? Is I there something it. that, that, that the, you want the people to tune into? Well, I got a record coming out on, what's today? Tuesday, Thursday. I got a record called Get Off It's going to be out home. now. Because yeah, this right. one is, yeah, record out now. Record out right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Record out right now. Called? Get Off The Phone. Okay. It's going to be... Streaming everywhere, you could go anywhere, get get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm for for the summer. Like I know people are accustomed to. I could really like do all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? You you definitely gonna have a couple records from me. You're definitely gonna hear from me. You know what I'm saying? You're definitely gonna hear about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I'm telling you, man. Like you know, I went through. I just sat here and told you all the struggles that I went through and I oh, I overcame. You know what I'm saying? 
And that shit is like in my stomach. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm making this music, when I'm doing, I'm coming. Like, like nothing's gonna stop me. I don't give a fuck, bro. Like with the same tenacity and the same energy that I had when I was banging on dudes, like, and I, I was like, yo, that's how I feel right now. But with the music, we're, we're, we're moving. That's the same gut feeling I have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I'm ready to put in the, put somebody in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel right now, but not. On that type yeah, of time. We ain't gonna kill nobody. Put on this music. Like, I'm gonna work kill hard. this music. I'm gonna work hard and I'm get to it. We're not gonna kill nobody. To, listen, parole, listen. I'm gonna make sure, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, I'm gonna nah, make sure nah, that he's parole. good. Shout you get what I'm saying? Parole, man. He's Thank gonna God. be good. I he promise you. Good. But it's lit. Yo, Mac, I, I must say, the story's amazing. Um, like I said, I've been watching you for a couple years. Um, exactly what you said is exactly it. You're, you are the you're it here. You get what I'm saying? No matter what record you come out with, you are the attraction of your whole brand. It's not how you dress. It's not your jewels. It's not the song. It's not nothing but you. With that being said, you gonna, you're set up to last the longest because you're not going to morph. You get what I'm saying? You are that man already. So you have it. Finish the play. And time is now. You get what I'm saying? I'm excited to watch it front row. You're from New York. I want our roster to bulk up. I like when we looking like we got a lot of smoke on the line. You get what I'm saying? Because we can go to war with the Atlantas and the so L.A.s City, and the Detroit's, man. Atlanta. You I'm know, saying, like it's, it's so much more to fight because they're beating us senseless. Now I know. You get what I'm saying? Jesus. So I, I want some new shit. So we here. I'm excited. Is there anything you want to lead to people? Um, Just, you know, just... uh. I left a message with the, with the people, with the with the younger people. Like you know what I'm saying, just pay attention, man. Pay attention. You know what I mean. Know and and know that you know. Be careful with your choices. It's all about your choices. You know what I mean. It's something that you know. And it's just not for the kids. It's for grown ass men too. Because I deal with the same shit. We all deal with the same shit. So everybody just know that you know choices determine your future. And you know, China Mac is gonna be that fucking deal, man. I I, I die trying, man. You, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Shout out to 50, man. <laughs> I ain't mad at it. It's lit.